Hi, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at uh, some applications of linear equations, uh, typically some things that we'll be needing to do uh, between now and the end of the semester. Um, in this video we're going to look at solving formulas for one variable. So we'll have um, a series of equations here and we'll be asked to solve for a particular variable. And we'll look at some methods uh, for how to do that. So here in this first example, we're asked to solve for r in the equation c equals 2 pi r. Now you might recognize that formula that's the circumference of a circle given by 2 pi times the radius of the circle. All right, now we want to solve this for r. We want to solve for the radius here. Now we see that r is being multiplied by 2 and pi, so this 2 and pi needs to uh, be moved over to the other side with the c. And so since they're being multiplied, uh, we need to undo that action, which means we need to divide. So we'll divide both sides by 2 pi. So let's write this again. So we have c equals 2 pi r. Divide both sides by 2 pi. And so we have uh, the 2's, 2 pi's cancel. We're left with r. I'm going to go ahead and write it on the left here. r, r equals c circumference over 2 times pi. All right, so we have solved this equation for r. And now if we have a circumference, we could plug that in and then get recovered the radius right, of the circle. Okay, great. Um, let's look at the next problem here. We want to solve again for r uh, in the equation d equals rt1 plus rt2. All right, one thing to note here is that these 1s and 2s are, uh, they're not part of the equation other than to identify that these two t's are different. Um, you can think of them as uh, these little t's are waving little flags. This says I'm 1, this one is saying I'm 2. So um, uh, this might be a time 1 and a time 2 later. So uh, this particular equation could represent, uh, say, the distance something travels after um, moving particular this r for a certain amount of time and the same r for another amount of time. So distance equals rate times time for two different uh, times here. Okay, um, and so we're asked to solve for r, and you can see there's a kind of a problem. We have r appearing twice in our equation here, and uh, the question then is, well, how do we get that by itself? Now, we can see that uh, it's being multiplied by the t1, this r is multiplied by t2, however we cannot divide by uh, t1 and t2. Uh, and the reason is we have this plus here. If we were to divide, divide both sides by t1, we'd get d1 or d divided by t1, and then this whole expression on the right hand side divided by t1. Um, we could then divide this term by t1 and this term by t1, but that doesn't make this, um, that doesn't free up the r over here. Okay, uh, what, something we need to do, we need to get the r alone as one thing by itself. And to do that, we're going to use factoring. So you've got an r times t1 plus an r times t2. Uh, both of these terms have a common factor of r. So what we'll do is we'll factor that out. So we'll be very careful about this. So d equals r times t1 plus t2. Okay. So I've taken an r factor of r and factored out of both terms in the sum, written it like this. Now, you can always distribute and check to see if we factored correctly. So let's see if we did this right. So r times t1 is r times t1 plus r times t2, r times t2. There we go. Okay, now this is set up a little bit better because now we have d equals r times something. Kind of like we have up here, we had the r times something and we divided to get the r by itself. Here we have the r times something, it happens to be a sum, that's no problem. Uh, and now we just divide by that to get the r by itself. So we'll divide both sides by t1 plus t2.
And so this will leave r by itself on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side we have expression in d here. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have r equals d divided by t1 plus t2. All right, and so we've solved for r. Now given a d and a t1 and t2, we could then get um, an r. Okay, let's look at this last example. We're asked to solve for x in the equation y equals 2 thirds times the quantity x minus 5. All right, so here we're trying to get the x by itself, and if we look at this equation, you can see that it's trapped, so to speak. It's trapped inside this parentheses. Uh, we need to break it out so that we can get it by itself uh, using kind of the same procedures that we've done over here. Okay, um, so one thing we can do is to um, get this expression that involves x by itself. And that means undoing this action of the two-thirds. In fact, since that is a fraction, um, and typically we don't like fractions, um, I would recommend that we just get rid of the fractions right now. All right, so uh, we see the denominator here is a 3. If we multiply both sides of this equation by 3, uh, we can get rid of that denominator. I think that's what we should do. All right, so let me write down the equation again. y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. And now we're going to multiply both sides by 3. 3y right. three on the left-hand side. 3 times 2 thirds is 2. All right, now no fractions. All right, much better. Okay. Now let's go ahead and distribute this too. We've got 3y equals 2 times x minus 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, and now we can work towards getting this term with an x by itself. So we'll add 10. So 3y plus 10 equals 2x. Then we'll divide by 2. And we need to divide everything on both sides by 2. So the 10 also divided by 2. All right, so that gives us 3 halves y plus 10 divided by 2 is 5 equals x. And there we go. Solve this equation for x.